Have you ever wondered how to organize your computer files as a music composer? Let's talk about it. What's up guys, this is Steven Malin, music composer for the screen, helping you build a music business that supports your family. Today, we're gonna do a very quick video where I show you a little behind the scenes of my computer build and how I organize my files. Now, every composer is going to organize their files quite differently, but I hope that this little peek behind the curtain gives you a few ideas of how you might want to upgrade your own hardware so that you can better organize your files and ultimately you can spread out the CPU and the memory or the RAM usage on your machine so that you're not bogged down with technical glitches and you can write more music faster. A few years ago, I did a custom PC build where I went through all the specs and we actually filmed that whole process. So if you wanna check out that video, check out the card above me or link in the description below. And even earlier this year in 2020, I did a studio tour where I showed you the machine and just talked a little bit more about how I currently use it in my setup to do both music composition and YouTube videos. Today, I wanna to show you the internal and external drives to show you exactly how I allocate my resources to where I can write and load things on my computer almost instantaneously. Let's take a look. So here is my PC folder within Windows 10. And you'll notice that right now, even with just the recording software and Pro Tools to record my voice right now, you see I'm only using about 20% of my CPU and my memory is only about 20%, which is 12 gigs. And you'll notice that I do have 64 gigs of RAM, which might be overkill for most composers, but for me, I do use a lot of that, and especially if I wanted to open up something like Vienna Ensemble Pro and load two or three or 400 instruments at once. Individual instruments like super heavy contact instruments and Omnisphere and all these big things, big plugins, then yeah, I'll get way closer to 50 gigs of RAM or 60 gigs of RAM, but I'm never gonna max it out because 64 is a really high number. So for most composers, I'd recommend at least 32, but somewhere between that and 64 is very helpful. But as far as CPU goes, this is an item that most composers neglect and they don't realize that CPU is what is causing their machine to kind of break. And it's causing a lot of long load times and it's just giving them a lot of headaches and wasting so much time. So you'll notice that kind of at this standstill right now, I have a Pro Tools open, which is my DAW right now. I could write a full track right now within Pro Tools and it's not gonna go over 30% CPU, which is a wonderful place to be. Let's take a look at how I've actually separated my drives. So you'll notice that I have a Windows drive, which is one terabyte, and that is an internal drive. And so that's just all of my programs, my apps, those types of things. And then I have a samples drive. You'll notice I have two samples drives. So this first one is a two terabyte internal SSD. So those are really expensive. And if you can't afford it, don't do it. But if you can afford it, then I definitely recommend it because that is what allows my sample instruments to load quite literally instantly. I open up a contact session, boom, it loads. And so within my samples, I like to organize my files based on companies. So first and foremost, I like to have one folder that has all of my DLLs, which within Windows, those are your plugins. And that way, if I'm using something like Vienna Ensemble Pro, I can direct everything to that one folder. Or if I open up a DAW like Cubase or Pro Tools, every DAW has a folder that you can select where you want all the plugins to live. I just find that to be the easiest way. And besides that, I have my contact libraries. And so within here, I have all of the different companies. And then for example, like 8DO, I have all these different instruments and then everything is very, very organized. That's really the, the main point here today. You'll notice those are all my 8DO and you can go through the list of all the different companies of contact. And then I even have Vienna Symphonic Library and all those different libraries. And so I have a lot of stuff on here. My samples to drive, however, is a very slow, very inexpensive four terabyte external hard drive. So that means it sits on top of my PC 
and it's external, so it's a USB 3.0, so it's pretty fast. It's not the fastest thing in the world. It's not anything as fast as my first sample drive, but that's why I only put my small samples on here or samples that I don't want to access very often. And so East-West Quantum Leap notoriously has massive files, part of their play engine. It's very slow. It has a huge footprint. So that's a great place for those libraries to go because I don't use them very often. This is actually where I put Simple Samples Audio, which is my library company, because everything I make has a very small footprint. So in my current setup, I basically use my samples to drive for everything that I create. That way I know it's always in one spot because if any of you have ever moved items from drive to drive and then tried to refind them with contact, it is such a mess. So I highly recommend even from the very beginning that you create a folder structure that you're gonna wanna keep forever because as soon as you move or even change one letter of a folder name, all of a sudden, all of your past projects to that date will not be able to find your instruments. So it's really important to pick a very clean and clear organization structure that makes sense for you. I have three more drives that I wanna look at. Let's take a look at the backup drive. So I have a dedicated external three terabyte backup drive. And what this does is every single day when I turn on my computer, it launches a backup software, which basically goes through and copies all of the movable, changeable files. And it copies them into one file on my backup drive. And that way, if I ever have a crash or if I ever have an issue where maybe I saved over a project, which let's be honest, this happens more often than we want it to, where we make a new version of a piece of music and then we accidentally erase something, right? That's why backups are so invaluable. So it's very important that we have that going at all times. It's important that your backup drive is larger than the sum of all of the items you're trying to back up, right? To me, the most important thing to back up are projects because it's the one thing I can't find online, right? Because if I were to lose a sample library, I could just re-download it from the site or a plugin, right? If I were to lose an app from my Windows drive, not a big deal, you go and download it from the site again. But the projects and media files, which are custom made, things like YouTube videos I've made and all the files and all the artwork, all of my projects that are custom scores for different things, I can't lose those. <laughs> so I make sure that my backup, which is a three terabyte external backup USB, I make sure that every morning it's backing up anything that I change. What's cool about backups is you can set it to incremental, which means it creates one full backup the first time you do it, it might take like a day or two because it's so large. But then every day, all it does is it searches your machine for any changes that you've made and then it updates just those changes. So it might be a Cubase file that you've made a new version of, so it's gonna just back that up. Or if you made some artwork, you made a new YouTube video, whatever, it's gonna back up just the things that are new, which is very helpful and it allows your backup to only run for like 30 minutes every morning. And that way it's not stealing any CPU later in the day when you really need it. Let's take a look at the projects file. So I have my projects divided by the type of media. So it's video games, films, freelance projects, personal writing, concert writing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I have a lot of things that I do personally. So that is the best way for me to organize it. And so you might go into video games, you might see different video games there. You might go into film, see different films, different freelance music projects. And I have hundreds of projects in there. And I intentionally create these folder systems. That way it's really easy to search and find things years later. That way I never lose my files. A quick note on that. If you look at my desktop over here on this folder, I have a folder called current projects, which I think is so important. When I'm working on a project, I am constantly going back to my folders. But what is difficult about this whole sorting and organizing situation is sometimes you might get seven, eight, nine, ten folders deep because you're trying to be organized and it's just really hard to find your stuff. So I have a current projects folder where I literally have shortcut folders or alias 
folders that at any point I can click on one of these, such as Monster Sanctuary. Click on that and it brings me straight to that folder, which just happens to be projects, video games, Monster Sanctuary. Another one, which is way more complicated, is the Bornite Musical Podcast. This is actually within like five subfolders. So that gets a little bit more complicated. Same thing with Realm Weaver, which is a video game I'm working on right now. This is like 10 subfolders. So that is just so hard for me to find. I wouldn't want to every single day have to go into my projects folder and then my freelance folder and then full and scholar and then Realm Weaver and then video games and then live recordings, Budapest. It's like, what? That's just so much work and thought and energy put into something that all I have to do is make a shortcut once. And that way when I'm done with that project, I erase it from that shortcut folder. And you'll notice that the trend here that I'm talking about is to use shortcuts as your friend. Because the whole idea here today is by separating all of my files into dedicated drives, my computer never gets bogged down. Because it's, think of a highway, right? If you have more lanes of traffic, it's never gonna get stuck and have a traffic jam. But if you only have one lane of traffic or two, then your computer is gonna be constantly fighting for resource management. So the more drives you have, the more you can spread out your resources and then create shortcut folders to better attach everything together. The last drive is the media drive, which is another external drive, which is two terabytes big, nothing too fancy or special about this, because the thing about media files is you don't need them to be accessed immediately. This is why we spend the big money on internal SSD drives for sample libraries because we need to access them immediately and for windows files my program files i need pro tools and cubase and digital performer and all my daws and programs to load immediately i don't want to wait on those so that's why those go into my windows file internal ssd that's why my computer boots up so fast that's why updates don't take long because it's it's all based around my computer working as quickly and efficiently as possible so inside the media drive this is where all of my files land if it's not a custom project for a client and it's not a sample library. So this is kind of everything else. More than any other investment I've made, just having a simple two terabyte external slow media drive, which is very inexpensive on Amazon, having a media drive allows me to offload all of the miscellaneous videos and music files and things that I don't want to be clogging up space on the precious real estate of my internal SSDs. Because those get really expensive when you start getting into the multiple terabytes. It's important to organize your media files in a way that makes sense to you. So for me as a YouTube content creator, I have a YouTube folder and then all the dates by all the years, by all the topics. And that way, years later, now that I've been doing YouTube for so long, I can go back and I can find old content from 2008, right? I can find stuff from 2005 and it's still in its proper folder and everything's organized and it looks great. And that's also true for my most recent years. And so it's a really, really important thing to be able to find that content and reuse it. Same thing with my course material because those get very, very large, very fast. Anytime I do video editing, um, and especially with things like game music packs and music libraries, it's important to make sure that your files are organized that way you can find your stuff later. In a nutshell, the purpose of organizing your files is to make sure that each of your drives has a dedicated purpose and it really doesn't matter if you have internal versus external drives so long as they have a dedicated purpose. It does matter if you are going for speed that you invest in an internal SSD, but if you could only buy one, I would choose to use it for a samples drive. Everything else will be totally fine using an inexpensive USB external hard drive. Thanks for watching guys. I hope that this video was helpful for you. If you liked the video, hit a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content like this every Wednesday. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. What is your computer setup? How many drives do you have? And how do you allocate your resources? Not every composer does this the same way, but hopefully this has given you a model to try to imitate for yourself. 
There are links below to my favorite Amazon hard drives that you can click on. Those are affiliate links that support my business at no additional cost to you. So grab those below, especially if you're watching this around the time of a holiday where typically these things go on sale. So take advantage of that. And I hope that this serves you well. See you guys next time.